be me. Late 1990s. Work in a very rural area of Russia as sort of a ranger wildlife preservationist. In Russia, we don't have the same regulations and strict protocols as some of you might. We more or less just drive around on ATVs and berate poachers while we ensure the safety of the deer population and shit like that. I worked in a rural area surrounded by forest and harsh wilderness. Only had one colleague, who we'll call Peter. It's short and easy to remember. Peter was your typical backwash crazy Russian dude who brewed his own vodka and smoked like a chimney. He was my best friend for several years and always had my back no matter what we faced out there in the woods. The job had shit pay, but it came with loads of perks that made it worth it. We had no boss and could basically just go camping, get wasted, and call it an excursion. I will admit that we once or twice hustled some innocent hunters from their money by claiming that they were poaching. We were corrupt as fuck, but still managed to make some decent arrests and put some real poachers behind bars. But sometimes, we got calls that required us to do some actual hard work. If people spotted sick animals, it fell upon us to go out there and make sure it didn't spread. If an animal showed aggressive behavior that might endanger the locals, we had to ensure that the animal got put down. We had friends at the local vet who would run blood samples if we suspected rabies or something else. One day, Peter and I got a call from some pretty spooked locals. They told us that some boys had gone hunting a couple days ago, but none of them had returned. They all believed that they had been killed by bears or wolves. <sighs> Great. Now we have to venture out into the wilderness for some potentially aggressive carnivores. They point us in a general direction, and we take off on our ATVs. We drive around the area for about three hours when we find an abandoned campsite. It was evident the camp had been trashed by something, probably a bear. By the looks of it, the boys had left the camp in a hurry, not even bringing their rifles. From then on, we went on foot, with our guns drawn, just in case. We found the first corpse a few meters away from their camp. He was lying on his stomach, with several deep wounds to his back. What struck us as weird was that it was deep puncture wounds, which we had never before seen in a bear or wolf attack. There was a clear path which indicated where the other boys had fled. We found two boys in the same small area, both of them lying dead with similar wounds. One of them had practically been gutted. Peter was visibly shaken by this scene, and just kept shaking his head in disbelief. According to the locals, there were supposed to be four boys out there, so we were still missing one. We both tactically shat our pants when we heard something rustling through the brush towards us. We aimed at the commotion, and waited for it to reveal itself before we shot. I almost dropped my rifle when it emerged from the dense bushes. It was a red stag, with the mangled remains of the fourth boy stuck in its antlers. It had trouble holding its balance under the weight of the boy, but still bellowed aggressively, as if it was about to charge us. Peter was the first to snap out of the shock, and started lighting the fucking thing up. Upon further inspection, we noticed that its antlers were worn down and broken. It had put an excessive amount of force behind each of its charges, breaking its antlers on the poor boys. The reason the fourth boy was stuck in the antlers was because the damn thing had practically torn through his ribcage. We couldn't separate the boy from the antlers, so we had to bring the head with us. It was one of the most fucked up rides home, with a cargo of several corpses tied to the back of our ATVs. The local authorities were pretty angry at us, seeing as we had moved bodies from a potential crime scene, but let us off easy, seeing as the killer was literally embedded on one of the victims. Seeing the heartbroken parents of those boys still haunts me. That night, I hung out with Peter, mostly because I was still pretty spooked. That shit wasn't natural, he said at one point. Deer can be aggressive and defend against predators, yes, but this fucker hunted down those boys and killed them all. They don't do that shit. That was the first time I caught a glimpse of the spooky shit that goes on out there. In the following years, I saw some deeply insane shit that only Peter and I knew about. I will share some of the stories with you, and hopefully you will believe me and understand why I am scared shitless every time I see a deer.